you're, you, Charles, you're you're right. I was that was dumb. You're good looking. I'm not. You're funny. I'm not as funny sometimes. You're absolutely right about the public library card. If if I, I hope every town has. I'm sure every big town does. An, an incredible resource, completely free. So much stuff on there. Of course, I'm using it for comic books right now. They have they have music. They have of course novels. They have nonfiction. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible resource that I'm afraid more, a lot of people like me either don't know about, know about, dismiss, and don't take advantage of. Can't say enough about it. Of and Charles. Talk comics. You ready to go? I'm going to start. Hi there, and to welcome it, to, to it. Like, per... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What what were you going to say? I was going to say, do it to it, like Pruitt used to do it to it. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to episode three of Hav and Charles Talk Comics. I'm Charles Herring, and I'm here with my good friend. Can I call you my good friend? I don't care. My good friend, Javier Gonzalez. Hi, Hav. How you doing? I'm good, Charles. How are you? And of course, you can absolutely call me your good friend. And of course, you don't have to ask permission to do that. Well, that's good. We live in a consent is important world, so... True. So when last we left us as your heroes of this podcast, we had just gotten done uh, talking about some comic books, believe it or not. That is correct. And we had talked about Squadron Supreme and Black Hammer Volume 2. That is correct as well. And we also had not yet had a podcast up on the internet or a podcasting site for anybody to listen to. But you know what has changed? I do, but go ahead. Well, what has changed is we are actually live with episode one at the record during the recording of this podcast. It came out last Friday. This is Thursday of the following week. And the next episode, the episode two that you were just mentioning, will be out the week after. I mean, it's really not. I'm not bothering with dates here because this one won't be out for two weeks after that one. Since we have decided, since we recorded the first two episodes, that we're going to publish, hopefully, once every two weeks. Right, so. and that'll keep, uh, I'm going to say us, but really me, on a schedule where I'm actually trying to keep up. Once I sit down and read it, I pour through this stuff. It just sometimes it takes a little motivation of like, hey, we have a podcast coming up. I should probably read what uh, Charles suggested to me and what I suggested to Charles. And I guess speaking of that, off the top, just so everybody knows, uh, you know, this is obviously about comic books, since it's called Hob and Charles Talk Comics, and the format is pretty darn easy. I suggest something for Charles to read, Charles suggests something for me to read, and then hijinks ensue when we discuss it on the podcast. That's this podcast, right? Yeah. I'm hoping I'm hoping you don't you're not moonlighting on me on another podcast <laughs> just doing the same thing, except better. I I, I don't have enough time to do this podcast seemingly, so no, I don't have enough time to do another podcast. Okay. So this week, as we've mentioned more than once in the previous two podcasts, that evidently more than two people have listened to. Oh, yeah? Or I at least the first. I, I don't even know. Go ahead. Well, you don't have access to any of that because I, I got it all set up. So you have no way of knowing anything about anything. But actually, a few people have listened to it. I'm rather excited about that. I'm pretty sure I know everybody that's listened to it, or between the two of us, we know everybody that's listened to it, but... That's kind of cool. You can also follow us at cool. our Twitter page at Hav, the and sign, Charles Talk Comics. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just what the title says. No, it's J and C Talk Comics, all written out, at J and C Talk Comics on Twitter. Cool beans. Yes. And let me just endorse that. I follow that Twitter page. As do I. Or feed. As, as do I. I. I follow that. Not only do I follow it, I tweet from it. Yeah, you do. And again. sometimes some snarky tweets pointed at yours truly. <laughs> That's just marketing. It's what the kids like nowadays. Yes. Of course, we're not on the, we're not on the gram, on the Instagram or anything. I don't oh. even know what that is. Is that right? Is it Instagram? Yeah, it's Instagram. Yeah, I just, I don't, I just, I just can't even um, with the Instagram yet, I guess. I'm not sure how a podcast would translate to Instagram since isn't that pretty much photo and image based? It is, although I have been screenshotting a lot of stuff when I read it off my iPad, and I've even put some uh, of those screenshots up from the first episode. Things that I didn't get a chance to bring up, I was planning on talking about them from that 
I think it was all from the, uh, oh, we talked about Black Hammer and Under Siege. Squad? Under Siege. Oh, Under Siege is the very first Oh, one. so you're pulling me off sides okay. again. You just want me to call everything Suicide Squad. Yeah. <laughs> you do have a tendency, for some reason, Squadron Supreme to you with Suicide Squad in your mind. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, to bring us back a little bit, this week we are talking about Justice League, the first what what did we decide? The first seven episodes? So, <laughs> there, I did it again. The first seven yes! issues. Yes! Uh-huh. <laughs> the first seven issues of Justice League after the end of Crisis on Infinite Earths, Earths? Yes. Yes. And also after Legends, another miniseries. I think right around the same time, right, right, right before Justice League, this iteration of Justice League launched in 87. Okay. Okay, so this was 1987. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so let me just, uh, well, hey, you said, were, there, were there things you wanted to touch on from some of the other stuff we talked about, uh, especially if, if there's any links or comparisons to what we did between episode one and two and one and two and now three? No. Or do you want to just let it organically unfold? Yeah, let, let's let's just dive right in to Justice League. Okay. Since we've been taking, I think we've been taking these things chronologically recently, so I, I thought we'd continue with that. And Justice League is definitely chronologically earlier than Stumptown. Just by a bit. <laughs> I, I will point out just something that I found fascinating when I was uploading the episode one notes. The two Under Siege Avengers came out, I believe it was in July of 1986, and Black Hammer came out in August of 2016. So almost exactly 30 years apart. And that really does encompass our, our, our reading areas there. Although we've both read comics for more than 30 years, but it was just a, a holy cow, we couldn't have picked two just bookend for uh, the time period of reading. Right. And well, in the mid '80s was really in my wheelhouse of when I was just knee deep in it. Mm -hmm. uh, very middle school era for yep. me. So yeah, that, I thought that was very cool when you pointed that out. I, I, I did again hap happenstance, cool Hap coincidence, and very cool just to find out. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this Justice League arc that we read. Sure. So Justice League, which by issue seven is is rebranded Justice League International, is, like you said just a second ago or a minute or two ago, coming off the heels of Crisis on Infinite Earths, where all the multiverse was uh, of, for DC was smashed together, and you brought in a lot of heroes from a lot of different universes into one universe, essentially. And I'm, I'm really given very short cliff notes here on that. And then also the original Justice League of America title, which had run since the 60s, I believe, came to an end right before the relaunch of just Justice League in 87. And that, very much in keeping with the times, had an incredibly dark and sad ending to that to the Justice League Detroit era of the Justice League of America, where you had... At one point in time, Aquaman, and then he left, and it was John Jones, Martian Manhunter, Elongated Man, and then they very much went with a, a B League, or even D list, if you will, of other heroes on the Justice League, including Elongated Man, Steel, Gypsy, Vixen, and Vibe. And at the end of that last arc of the original Justice League of America title, the last, I think, four issues. I think it's four, maybe three, but four in that range, was called the end of the Justice League. <laughs> and again, keeping with the times, dark because Steel and Vibe are killed by Dr. Ivo and his robots. And I think Vixen, Gypsy, and Elongated Man say, okay, I'm done with this. And, and you get a little taste of that in issue number one of Justice League at the very beginning where John Jones is entering the headquarters and they have them up on the screen and he just clicks it off and he looks very, you know, down and somber because it was it was just a rough go for your heroes. And then this book, like I said, this version of the Justice League very quickly establishes itself as not going to be dark. 
and quite the opposite. I, I always enjoyed it back then and still do, do to this day because it is, I still think, funny and refreshing to read this, this group of heroes, including the Batman, sometimes making some jokes. And huh. so that leads us up to the beginning of, of this of this of this new new version of the Justice League. Fair? Yes. Sure. I I didn't really know any of that cuz I have only ever dabbled a little bit in reading any Justice League's graphic novels I might on occasion pick up at the library. It's not really been my in my uh ballywick. I I'm not a big as I've said before, I'm not a big group comic uh group superhero fan. So that's of course gotcha. all you're making well, hey, me read. Be, uh, yeah, I know. Oh yeah, and I, you know what? I'm not doing that on purpose. You know what no. I'm doing? I'm suggesting for now. I'm suggesting stuff for you to read that I kind of just really wanted to go back and reread myself. No, I think you're doing and, fine. Um, I, I, that was not a complaint. I'm having fun laughing to myself about this. It's just kind of reinforcing this with me. I, I I like to take more than I want a deeper dive into an individual character. I, I really want to know why Guy Gardner had that stupid fucking haircut. Maybe he just doesn't have a good barber. I, I, I actually think based on his personality, he pissed off his barber. That would be completely believable. <laughs> because it, it, for, I don't know if people listening are into Guy Gardner, the one of the many Green Lanterns that for some reason Earth has. He's just uh, not very nice. He's an asshole. I'm pretty sure... Uh... Uh, I'm pretty sure Earth has so many Green Lanterns because it's such a fucking shit show. Yeah, there's always something going on where maybe maybe one more than one GL is necessary to handle up on it. I mean, it's that whole Marvel uh, thing where everybody in the known universe in the Marvel comics thinks Earth is just... I mean, everything bad starts from Earth. Yeah. This backward yeah. blue planet that just is a travesty. So it's probably the same way in DC. And and just to, just to go back just a sec, when you're talking about and, and I, 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 maybe we talked about this in one of the last podcasts. You know, you were you said before many times to me when we were just talking about comic books that you were very much more into the you know one hero Spider Man sort of guy. Mm -hmm. I always gravitated towards the team books because I just liked reading about bunches of different characters and. It just was fun and cool, whether it was X-Men, Justice League, Avengers, New Mutants, even Alpha Flight, I've mentioned before. Mm -hmm. it, would, it was always fascinating. Now, that said, you're absolutely right. There are, there are players and characters where you just get a taste and you don't really get to know them very well just because there's not really room for it or they're, they're not there very long sometimes. Yeah, and they also so. are afraid, especially if they have their own books, the writers afraid to do something inside this book with that character and advance the character in any way. So they leave a lot of them out. So they don't really have arcs within the team book. Very I, true. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was just watching, I think it was on Screen Crush, uh, Ryan Aries' uh, breakdown of Wanda and the Vision. I think he was the one that was talking about in an Avengers book, and it could have been somebody else, because I watch lots of silly YouTube videos about comic books, because, I mean, I'm doing a comic book podcast, so, duh. But talking about, throughout the history of the Avengers, the Scarlet Witch and Vision really had a chance to blossom throughout the, the Avengers, because they weren't in an individual book. So that was where they could do things with them. That's why there's this backstory of the two of them and the Avengers. Whereas Captain America had his own book, other characters that are Avengers, I don't Iron, know which at what right, time Iron who was Man, who. Thor. Yeah, they all have their own books. Their uh, main role happened in their other books, and it seems like a lot of the time well, it's just a different like, character in a team book than it is in their own book. I mean, when you read when you read um, Wolverine in on the team, and then you read the uh, when he's in his own book, he's he's almost two different characters. Well, and nowadays, which team book are you talking about? Because isn't, isn't he on every Avenger or Marvel team there is now? Well, yeah, he, ha he has been over the last few years on pretty much every team in every iteration of Wolverine. I, well, I guess I shouldn't have used you know, so... Wolverine, I, but y you get what I'm saying. Um, I can use Superman in Justice League because Superman doesn't ever, when he's in the Justice League, to me, seem like Superman. Well, yeah, he's just very much the... I think the what idealized you're not going to get a lot of his drama with Lois or mm -hmm. 
deep dives on his home life or or or, him being... or his kindness and sense of humor. Yeah. And then they, yeah. with Batman, they just go into uber dick with him. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, well, and because he's good at it, I feel like, or maybe this, I like these writers too. Let me, let me point that out real fast. So Keith Giffen, uh, J.M. Uh, uh, Demetrius are the plotter and writer. I think Keith Giffen may have done even layouts and plotting. J.M. Uh, uh Demetrius, I believe is how you say it, was the, actually did the script or the, the the writing writing, and then Kevin McGuire did the pencils, and I am blanking on who did the inks on it, and even the lettering I liked in this book. I like I like this book a lot. I'm just saying, I, 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 I this comic book. I it had a lot of fun stuff in it. I I will I will say it had a lot of fun stuff in it. I see why you enjoy it. I now, I will real fast before. Oh, go ahead. Um, I I will uh, I will do my best not to. Uh, bring down your joy of the book. So you're trying to say you hated it. No, I don't. I don't I don't hate it. I I will be perfectly blunt with you. I read this right after you suggested it to me, so at least a month ago, and I meant to reread okay. it today, but I didn't get to it. That's okay. There, there uh, there's a uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. and I I got I got my notes. But okay. before we get too far into it, I just wanted to point out you you made a good point about the team book when when they're using characters that have their own ongoing series. In fact, to jump back to the end of the Justice League original series, the reason why that that version of Justice League Detroit came about was because it's my understanding, and I don't remember the articles I read this on or where I saw this, that towards the end of that run of Justice League of America, editorial at DC said no DC characters with ongoing series can be in the Justice League. And I think Aquaman didn't have an ongoing series at the time. Uh -huh. And of course, John Jones didn't, Elongated Man. And that's why you had a bunch of really, you know, at the time and some to this day, between Steel, Gypsy, Vix, and Vibe, characters that just weren't, comp you know, not even household names for comic book readers back then. And I, uh, I didn't know who Vibe then, was until he appeared on the Flash television show. Well, and that version is a lot better. The one in, in Justice League Detroit, the end of the original Justice League of America, it was a he's a, a Puerto Rican descent. I don't remember if he's Puerto Rican or Puerto Rican descent, and all the stereotypes and cliches that could possibly go along with that uh, in the in the mid to late eighties are just th you know thrown out there and just kind of cringy. Oh, really? On a lot of levels. Yeah, he's kind of a thug, and, you know, they try to do an accent on him, I think. I don't remember that well about it. I just remember just thinking, oh, hey, well, I remember thinking, oh, cool, look, a uh, uh, Hispanic Latino character. Oh, wait, oh, no, what? Oh, right. And then they killed him. <laughs> so there was that. So just so you know, the, the, I think it may be a, a good idea in theory, but then you have a Justice League where the biggest name is John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. Who, you know. We've we've made points in the past, you know, on the Black Hammer series, he was very much an analog uh, for uh, or a basis for Barbalian, which mm -hmm. is, you know, to, to try to link these together. And then the other thing I just wrote down while you were mentioning team books, that was what was cool about Uncanny X-Men back in the 80s, I think, is because until Wolverine got his own series, I believe, in 88 or for sure late 80s, mm -hmm. none of those characters had their own books. So Chris Claremont was allowed to just do... Pretty much within reason, of course. I'm sure they wouldn't let him do everything maybe he wanted, but those characters had these long arcs of, you know, romance. It was very, very soap opery. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, Scott and Jean Grey, Scott and Matt, Madeline Pryor, and I well, that's that's for another day. But I that you made me think of that. That X Men was unique mm -hmm. back in that day because not everybody had their own book, especially Wolverine. Well, you know, even it, though it's he was kind probably of a, one of their most popular characters. Well, well un, I, other than the Avengers, a lot of their the original team book for Marvel, they didn't have their own characters because it was the Fantastic Four. They came up with a team book, right? But it was just the team, yeah. And it was a family. It was, uh, yeah, it was. So yeah, so uh, this starts out, and you get you get to see Guy Gardner and all his glory. Being being just a, a a bad person and sexist and rude and 
demeaning. And then you get to see him butt heads with Batman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, spoilers, if you haven't read this since it's only been out since 87, there is, in my mind, for me, one of the most iconic scenes in comic book history when that finally comes to a head. And I don't know, <laughs> did you enjoy that part of it? I did it. I did enjoy that. I told you at the time I enjoyed it. I, I actually enjoyed yeah. the whole comic. It just, it didn't strike me as a, uh, I don't know, a seminal work. It was entertaining. I liked some of the things in it quite a bit. Some other things are very dated. And, and well, I always like good. seeing, well, hey, uh, again. I always like seeing Captain Marvel. Me too. Me I, too. I, I, uh, I, I don't know why I like that. And I, and you notice I've, I don't know if you picked this up. I refuse to call him Shazam. He's Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. And he was yeah. back then. That that was that was his name. Just because they couldn't use Captain Marvel on the uh, on the title page of the comic because they lost the rights to it. Well, they never had the rights to it. Possibly. I should make <laughs> you research that. You're an attorney. That is a. I've I've tried to go through that. That was such bull. You know, Fawcett Fawcett Comics. And, and the people that worked at Fossil Comics came up with Captain Marvel back in the Golden Age. The little I know about it, DC, you know, that was the, Captain Marvel came out shortly after uh, Superman Action Comics number one came out. Yeah, it was a dead rip off of Superman. Well, not really. I mean, yeah, super powered fly, but different, you know, mm-hmm. okay. different. Or I mean, you got a kid saying a word to become a superhero. That's pretty different than Superman, I that, think. That is. That is. But, I, and I mean, what kid shouldn't follow a stranger into a subway to get magic powers? Right. Or wherever. I don't know the the origin story from the 19, you know, early 1940s. But yeah, oh, it, was, it was effectively I that. I don't know if it, I don't think it was exactly that. But yeah, just. Hey, what bad could happen with a, a, a 10 year old kid wandering off with a stranger in the big city? It was a simpler time. Um, well, and, and I do know, you know, litigation ensued and Fawcett Comics ultimately lost. I, or or DC just bought him out, and then they just buried Captain Marvel forever to the point where my understanding is if you don't use a trade name like Captain Marvel for a certain amount of time, it goes into the public domain, and somebody at Marvel was keeping track of the clock because as soon as it was public domain, boom, Marvel's version of Captain Marvel comes out, and I'm sure there were some upset people at DC think, <laughs> wondering how, how did this how, how did this happen? Yeah. Uh, why didn't we just, it, all we had to do was like publish a comic book like every few years to keep it. Well, and, and you so, would think that they is, would have been smart enough to do that considering the fact that that's why Wonder Woman has never not been published. Because when wow. they bought it from okay. the writer, there is something in the contract that said that if it's ever not published, the rights could revert back to the author. Not that they would, but yeah. that they could interesting i did not know that yeah okay i i learned that from another comics podcast i think i can't cool. remember which cool. one and now i feel bad because if i'm gonna i should be able to uh cite my sources yeah, i got you well you'll think of it a bit yeah well in in going on that thread of other other properties so captain marvel fawcett comics of, uh, originally and um blue beetle Originally, a Charlton comic book character uh, from the Silver Age mm-hmm. that, uh, in, and maybe even go back to the Golden Age. Actually, there was there was a version in this in the in the Golden Age, and then Ted Cord was a Silver Age version in in Charlton comic books. They eventually got bought out. And, and who created by it? DC? That would be the great Steve Ditko, I believe. Yeah, that is correct. I believe I might be making that up. Is that no, right? you're not. I'm not right. Who made it? Who, who created? No, who you're did? not making that up. You are correct, Steve Ditko. Oh. Okay, well, and I I know he did the version of Ted Kord, I believe, because he also came up with the question, Mm -hmm. which those two characters uh, and some others from Charlton were the basis for the characters that we see in The Watchmen. Exactly. Blue Beetle, you know, was the basis for Night Owl. The question was the basis for Rorschach. Captain Adam that we meet in the very last pretty much panel of this arc was the basis for Dr. Manhattan, and there's a few other things on there. But I thought that was a cool aspect of it, too. That was a cool aspect. That you're, post-crisis, you're getting to see these different characters from different companies at one point in time, different universes all together. I, I, going to what you said, I, I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. it. Again, this is something I read when it came out in the 80s, so it, it, it does have a special place for me, if you will. Mm-hmm. The, 
especially also because back then there was a lot of dark and gritty and this was absolutely not this was almost a laugh a panel for sure trying to crack wise a, a feel like a once per page you have batman cracking jokes and well, uh, what a couple three times three yeah i think he cracked yeah. three jokes but, but that's that's batman doing it that's that's uh you don't see you don't see bats being the the, the trying to not even trying because let's let's face it if batman wanted to be funny he'd be the funniest person in the world i disagree I all right well agree to disagree so, but yeah, so it was, you know, it was it, compared to stuff that was coming out back then, you got Dark Knight, you had Watchmen coming out, you had Squadron Supreme that we just talked about. I, this was a nice, to me, change of pace to be more lighthearted, although there was some kind of creepy stuff going on, too. Creepy and serious stuff. You get the whole... Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate is creepy as all get out. Yes. And Lords of, Lords of Order and Gre the Gray Man. Yeah, and the Gray Man bastard. was really... I, I'm not big on the, the creepy stuff, but I kind of liked that whole arc of the gray man and him taking what he was getting for punishment. And they're all like, no, we thought you were the guy for this. This wasn't a punishment to trap you in here and have everything be gray the entire life. That's not punishment. And strand you on an island, but you're, you can have other cells, but you have to be isolated and you can't interact with anybody. So, hey. What are you talking about? It's like a trip to Chuck E. Cheese. Dr. Fate has always been creepy. I was, I've always liked the creepy DC folks, even though I haven't read a bunch, like the Spectre, the Question, now that they're, you know, in DC, the Phantom Stranger. Mm -hmm. But they're, it's all creepy. And I, I always wish there would be some big, and maybe there has been, I just don't know about some big mega event, although they do those too often now probably for everybody's like, uh, for everybody's pleasure, but, or more than we would like, you know, some big event where you had all the big supernatural DC guys and girls, you know, Zantana, I don't know, I know there's others, I'm blanking, get together for some big event. Anyways, that's a little penny trail I just went down. Well, don't they have uh, a Justice League Dark or something like that? They, that's right. They absolutely did. They did that recently. And there was Shadow Pact that came out in the 2000s, I think, with some other supernatural types not really the big ones like Constantine or, mm -hmm. or Spectre or Phantom Stranger, but I, I know, I, I remember liking Shadow Pact. God, we're, I'm going down bunny trails now. I'm sorry, Charles. That's because okay. Chase the bunny. Detective Chimp, D Detective Chimp was in that series. And that was my first introduction to Detective Chimp. Oh Lord, are we back and, to Detective Chimp? Oh my God, we are. Cause I, that, I, that is just prime time for me. I guess Detective Chimp is better than, I don't know, you riffing for like 30 minutes on Cyclops. <laughs> Let's just say, I, I would take Detective Chimp over Howard the Duck any day of the week. Okay. Having not really read uh, not, you, either one of those, <laughs> I'm not going to really argue yeah, with you. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I've read hardly any Howard. Like, I've read him like in those little like two-page things I'd have sometimes in uh -huh. comic books I'd read. So I, I can't say anything about it. Hey, and the other thing I wanted to point out I know it's been a bit since you read it. In issue two, you saw these, speaking of different universes, and let me try to, you know, compare and contrast. You know, we talked about Squadron Supreme and, and them being from a different universe. In the second issue, you have these these heroes from a, from a, a, a planet that died that are now on the DC Earth, right? Yeah. I... And, and... and they were truly good guys. Yeah, they wanted to because their their planet fell uh, victim to a, a nuclear destruction, essentially mm -hmm. fallout, and eventually they left their planet using the, the magic of silver sorceress. And then you had one Gina, is how I'm going to say it, and Blue Jay, these three hero survivors of a of a dead planet, coming here and deciding, you know what, we're going to not let you all do to your planet what we what, what happened to our planet. We're going to disarm uh, the whole planet. Which to me just smacks of Squadron Supreme at some level, although you know obviously Squadron was doing it on their own planet. They didn't come over to the to the Marvel Universe yeah. six one six to do it. And, but I thought that was interesting. And and, and in fairness, all they were trying to do was get rid of nuclear weapons. They weren't trying to control everyone on the Earth. True, they weren't going Super Squad Supreme, and mind wiping, mind you know you knowing people. Yes. And changing their personality, mm -hmm. they're just like, look, nuclear weapons are bad. 
So uh, you can't you have guys them. Are dumb. But we're we're gonna take the exactly. gun away from the toddler. I mean, it right. makes sense. Did you read it all about there? Did you pick up that those were supposed to be analogs for uh, Marvel characters? No. In light. Silver me. sorceress. Silver sorceress. Okay. You already t- we already spoke about her from one division, uh-huh. the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. Okay. One one Gina. I don't know if you noticed a couple times. He was carrying a, a, a battle axe kind of hammer thing, and could uh, summon the the winds and the and the weather and the thunder and the lightning. It's supposed oh to be my a gosh, she's analog. even po- oh my gosh, she's even what? She's even posing like one. I got a screenshot of and, this when they're attacking the uh, Bialya missile oh yeah, silo she's doing area, her hands. and she's oh posing yeah. like the Scarlet Witch, and the other guy is introducing himself, and his name is Wandjina. So right next I'm, to yeah, I'm seeing Wandjina. Well, but what I'm saying is, while he's saying that, it's right next to her. She says, I am the Silver Sorceress, and he goes, I am Wangina, which is a lot like Wanda. So they weren't even a... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now that you bring it up, there's well, no subtlety there. In, in, in Blue Jay... And I, I missed I, it. I, I, I did... I, well, hey, I, I remember reading about this years after I read that arc, thinking, oh, wow, duh. Uh, because it wasn't as overt as Squadron Supreme mm-hmm. in Marvel, right? Right. Where it was Nighthawk was Batman and Super- and Hyperion was Superman. Blue Jay was a little tougher. The only thing I've read about that is that maybe it was supposed to be like a Yellow Jacket type character. Mm-hmm. And they also talked about in their universe, the fastest man on two feet died. And I forget what his name was. And he was supposed to be, of course. Quicksilver. Oh, my God. Quicksilver. Thank you. Quicksilver. I was blanking on Quicksilver's name. So, yeah. So I thought that was cool. No, that uh, that is that you, is very cool. Little, that Batman Kraken wise, the, uh, we, we we said it. We really didn't say it, the one punch where where Batman punches out Guy Gardner with one punch, and is now I feel iconic uh, at some level. And and Blue Beetle just losing his 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 mind about it and laughing and and Black Canary being upset she missed it. <laughs> and then right after that, yeah, she's very upset that she missed that. And then right after that, he's still the same after he comes to. Because somebody says, oh, should we check on, on Guy Gardner? And Batman says, no, he's going to be out for hours. And sure enough, he is. Because apparently Batman can't miss that punch. And which, he which, up, which and he as we know his... now, science-wise, that's really, really bad. He probably had a pretty bad concussion <laughs> from that. I mean, if you lose consciousness more than about a few seconds. Right. That's true. And plus, I'm, I'm not I'm not thinking he landed very softly. Like, first the punch to the head from the fist of Batman, and then I'm sure his head didn't just lightly land on the ground. Well, Guy Gardner's not the and, kind of guy you he... reach out to catch as he slams into the ground. You're like, huh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your ring back. Yeah, like now, <laughs> nowadays you'd be like, oh, I wish I was rolling my camera on that, my, my camera phone on that. Yeah. I, I missed it. And then he wakes up a little later. And he's still his his same sour, rude self. And then he's going to find his ring, which he took off to face Batman, which bad idea genes right there. Mm-hmm. He probably should have kept the ring on. And he goes under a console at, at, the, at the monitor in, in, the, in the headquarters, and a, a mouse scares him. He bumps his head. And then when he wakes up, he is all of a sudden more sweet and nice than Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. which you get to see more and more as the issues progress, even after this arc. Yeah, Which and I since, since I didn't continue reading, what the heck's up with that? Yeah, he, he he's like that for a while, and then guess what? He he's goes not going to stay like that forever. Uh-huh. He goes back eventually. Oh, okay. But so it was just they were having to, fun? To a degree. Yeah. Okay. I think so. They, they were just turning turning him turning it on his head. Him always being such a such a you know, I don't know. I don't I don't know if your if your nephew or is going to listen to this, but. Part of my French. It's for him being such a dick. I know we've already cursed a couple times. Dude, I've, I've um, cursed much worse than that. Don't worry about it. And yes, my nephew probably will. Okay. But he's 15. I'm sure he's heard those words before. Gotcha. Fair. So, and it's been a while. You know what? I, again, selfishly, I wanted to reread this. I know there's, you know, Justice League International brings in a lot of international characters, including Fire and Ice, to female characters. And Guy Gardner falls, falls hard for Ice later on in the series eventually I, he comes back to his old self but he still keeps some parts of it being nice because he, he he likes her and tries to be better i don't know i kind of remember that from back then I so, mean, that happens to all of us we that. meet a woman we like and we try to be a better person right no 
I know I, I try to be because uh, of Julian. So what else? Blue Beetle, and then eventually we meet his the, the Laurel to his Hardy, or the Abbott to Costello, or vice versa, Booster Gold. <laughs> because eventually they become just a, just a comic relief a, a comedy duo in the pages of Justice League and Justice League International. I really uh, enjoyed Booster and, Gold, and those are words I never thought I'd say. Ha! In a fairly new creation for DC at the time, he had his own ongoing series, I think, at one point in time back then. I don't know how long it lasted, but yeah, Booster was cool, right? It was He was fun. He was fun, but I, I liked how his audition was having to fight everybody while Batman's like, no, no, let's see what he can do. Yeah, hang, hang back. Let's let's see what the, what uh, old, old old gold here can do. It's like, uh, and then finally, when things got serious, Batman was like, "Okay, time time to go." Okay, I guess we can't let him die. There's, yeah, probably bad if on his first day he's dead. Well, and he's also brought into the league by one Maxwell Lord, who just recently had his big screen debut, albeit in my opinion, just kind of a weird version of him in Wonder Wonder Woman eighty four. No, oh, see, I haven't seen that yet. Um, Check it out. It's it, it it was okay. It wasn't as good as the first one. I didn't. It might. Well, that's that's that. Sa- I read I read reviews and it saddened me because I was really looking forward to it because I me thought too. they actually would, had finally made too. a good DC movie when they made Wonder Woman and. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> I, 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 I've only watched it once, but it was just a. Why they went from where they were at with the first one to eighty four and to that story, I, I don't know. I, they could. I, I just feel like they. I don't know if they were trying to do too much, but that's that's a whole different thing. Um, Wonder Woman eighty four. But I can tell you, Maxwell Lord was interesting to me even back then and now because he was obviously some, he was obviously working something behind the scenes with something else going on and those weird little shots where you had the computer doing its thing and mm-hmm. calculating odds and changing the playing field. And yeah. that gets fleshed out as we get deeper into the series. There's a lot of, I don't know that they're Easter eggs, there are a lot of the seeds they are planting in these early issues that, that pay off, I think, pretty well later on in the series, especially I, when this same, same creative team is still on it. I'm going to have to, I, I'm glad you mentioned that the whole international was on Hoopla because I'm going to have to get that and read, because I am interested in what was going on with Maxwell Lord. They, they did a really good it, job it on that. I was kind of irritated that we didn't get more into it before I stopped reading. Not not that I couldn't have kept yeah, reading. I mean, you're but... seven issues in. Hey, they, they very definitely slow burned that. Oh, and, yeah. And that, and from, from what I re- recall. That, that, was, that was an ongoing thing. You also got a little taste of Dr. Dr. Fate. He leaves pretty soon. Uh, I, I was going to say Mr. Miracle. Which I, I, another character I didn't know much about. I didn't know back when I read this in the 80s that he, that was a Jack Kirby creation uh, of the New Gods. And you also briefly get to we, meet, uh, albeit through some sp- split scenes with, uh, with Big Barda and him on the phone having to explain while he was on monitor duty for another 24 hours and her not being happy. And there is a funny moment where. Batman says, "Hey, Scott. His name's Scott Free. You're, you're Mr. Miracle. You're on monitor duty. When we get back, he's like, what do you mean? I, I got to get home. My wife, my wife will be upset.' And he's like, you have a wife, and this kind of, you know, your wife. And he says, my wife could kill the Joker with one hand, <laughs> um, because she's Big Barda, and she's like, as far as I know, like Wonder Woman level, maybe power, powerful, or or or, or close anyway. Yeah, from what I understand. So you get to you get to meet her and." I think we pretty much Black Canary's there. I was very disappointed uh, with the way Black Canary was portrayed because I love Black Canary and I did not care for it. There I said it. Well, because they were, you know, all the guys are making cracking wise and she's pushing back, but there's a lot of speaking of the time period, there those those kind of jokes wouldn't go over very well. Well, nowadays. that and that wasn't even it. I just they they are doing this thing that a lot of men do well she's feminist therefore she's a dick too uh-huh. i'm like i my only negative i really had on this comedy and it's it's across team books especially from the 80s which is when i didn't really want to read team books everybody had to be a dick all the time 
even the quote comic relief guys. I mean, except for Captain Marvel, and then he's not a dick because he's what at this point probably fourteen years old, right? Something like that. Thirteen, twelve, something like that. He's a kid in there, so. And and John Jones, Martian oh, Manhunter yeah. is always no. I, always Martian nice. Manhunter is great too. I I actually like Martian Manhunter, not as much as Barbalian, but no, I I can see that. I I this is when I really fell in love with Martian Manhunter as a character and. Mm-hmm. He had his back in this era. He had his own miniseries with the same writers mm-hmm. and Quater, Giffen, and uh, Demetrius. And a lot of there were a lot of uh, miniseries spinoffs. Doctor Fate mm-hmm. had his own one, and so did uh, so did Mister Miracle by Keith Giffen and okay. uh, Jam Demetrius. I that I think I'd that. enjoy reading I some deeper cuts with some of these characters by these writers. I think you would. And they're interesting, and they're different, and they're not all. I mean, the the Mister Miracle one definitely gets into his his home life with with Big Barda, with Barda, and and there's they're they're kind of living in suburbia, and that's kind of fun. And you know, that's what I'm all about is the home life of superheroes. Right. Well, that's why you know you wanted uh, Wandavision to just stay in those first few episodes and, and not change. <laughs> Hey, right. it's part of just... it's part of the reason why I, I'm the next comic you're reading is the. Hawkeye arc. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. I, I, cool. I, I'm, I'm legitimately not kidding. I do like knowing about the reality of the life of someone that would put on tights and go fight crime. Well, and, and you mean more of like, instead of like the gritty, you know, what if superheroes were real thing, more of like, hey, so what happens when it's, you know, his mom's birthday and he's forgot to get her a gift? Or something. I don't know. I just, oh, I don't know. I, I think I, I I am against a superhero that could just end the universe ending guy choosing not to go save a world because he had to go to his daughter's birthday party. I think that was bad. In hindsight, and of course you're referencing what happened at Black Hammer. <laughs> yeah. That, just, in just, hindsight. Just, just take 10 minutes, come over here, hit the damn guy with a hammer and go home. So that, yeah. <laughs> Really, really bad stuff doesn't eventually happen, including you dying eventually, by the way. But no, your 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 little girl's six you know, sixth birthday party or whatever it was. Totally worth it in hindsight. No. Bad idea. I don't know, I don't know if there's anything else. So eventually Maxwell Lord is behind the scenes and, and I'm giving away a lot of the plot, but just you know, if you haven't read it, that's on you. It, it's from the eighties. They you know, he, he he's behind the scenes. And as opposed you know, and I'm not doing that on this purpose, but I did think of Squadron Supreme when I was reading this recently instead of the team themselves imposing their will on the world you got maxwell lord manipulating things behind the scenes so that the un says hey justice league now you're justice league international you still can do whatever you want but you have this you have the authority based on the united nations to have embassies all over the world and good luck so i thought that was i thought that was interesting too and you know the next few issues they're setting up embassies and recruiting new members I would like to know what, since I don't know, I would like to know what the heck went on with Guy Gardner and the Russians prior to the episode when they were in Russian airspace. Or an issue, but sure, episode two works. Boy, again. Sorry. No, I, you're fine. I gonna, can't stop. Not, you can't. I, I literally can't. can't. I have I have issues with episodes or episodes with issues. Or something with both of them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you call TV episodes issues, maybe? Is it like something no. that you flipped in your no, head? No, evidently I'm just using episodes for everything. Okay. I don't know that much about it. It just, the little I know is from this and a couple other things I read way back when. Apparently he had a bad run-in with him. And also something they mentioned in this in this arc is that Kilowog, Green, Green Lantern uh, extraordinaire, uh, helped create or created the Rocket Red Russian U- uh, Soviet Union Iron Man type really? suits. They they mentioned that, and, and and I think it's part of some arc from Green Lantern or Green Lantern Corps back in the day. But I was not. I didn't read much if any of Green Lantern back then. But that's the very little I know about that. Um, I'm and, trying and, to think. If there's anything else I wanted. And to And you know out. me, um, Ryan Reynolds is the only Green Lantern I recognize. Right. Right. And that is your go-to DC movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the movie that almost ruined comic book movies. What else? And actually yeah. did ruin DC comic, comic movies, movies because they said, "Hey, well, if that that we tried to be funny with that one, so Zack Snyder, have your way with us." 
Yeah, now you can just go super dark on <laughs> Superman because, you know, <laughs> Superman's nothing but dark and gritty and not hopeful and, and aspiring. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's shoot it all in like a gray filter. Yeah. And, and put some Chris Cornell music over it. One other character. I'm sorry. I, I did have this note. Uh-huh. We get introduced in the, well, he's not a new character just for this arc. The Creeper. Speaking of another Steve, Steve Ditko creation. Wait, the was Creeper that the guy that shows Ryder. up in the town with, that was having the problem with the gray stuff? Yep. That's oh the my Creeper. gosh. I actually really liked that character. Great character, great version. I haven't read a bunch of it, but I don't. I definitely wanted more of that and him oh. just busting Batman's balls. <laughs> that was that was an enjoyable. That he had a little Joker, Batman dynamic going without the fear that he was going to you know try to massacre a hundred people. Right. Yeah. You, you definitely get the you get the idea that he's not quite right, mm-hmm. but not with the homicidal tendencies maybe. Yeah. Of the Joker. But in fairness, um, Batman's not quite right. Yeah, you know, seeing your parents murdered in front of you in an alley maybe does something to you, like makes you want to dress up like a bat and fight crime. I don't know. I'm but, not saying he had so yeah, through trauma. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. And well, then the Joker killing his second Robin uh, probably didn't help things. Again, in the 80s, when everything was dark and gritty. So yeah, I wanted to point that out because I, I did like that that appearance. Because he, you know, you had Jack Ryder appearing, I think, in earlier issues, and then finally you find out, oh, Jack Ryder's a creeper. Okay, here we go. Oh. Uh, and and yeah. So yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. I, I think it's one of those where you know, time and place. When it came out for me, I, I got it off the comic book rack at a, at a grocery store uh-huh. or at a B Dalton, and then was just in from issue one. <laughs> Until I was like in high school. All right. So it was just a, a time and place thing. So yeah. Well, I, I have to tell you about my favorite part of this. Please. And it has my one of my favorite DC characters, Superman in it. And he's at the White House. <laughs> and he's talking yes. to the president, who is clearly Ronald Reagan. Right. And it opens with, it's a pleasure to finally meet you. We've met before, Mr. President. We have? Yes, sir. Several times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's some serious shade because, come on. <laughs> right. And by the way, Reagan back then, uh, pretty popular president. Uh-huh. Won, won, the, won both of his elections by, like, landslides. So, well, yeah, they're... they're... Well, it, it goes on um, because he says, you'll have to excuse me, I've been under quite a bit of pressure lately. And uh, understood, sir. So they go on a little bit and they talked about the proposal and then he starts to, I didn't get the whole page, but the last th- bubble I've got is Reagan going, I've got to talk to Nancy about the proposal. Right, he's got to go check with Nancy. Superman, yeah. He's, 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 he's got to think about it. And he has to talk to Nancy, who I well, don't know it, when that came, this issue came out, but I, I, I do wonder if it's after everyone found out that she was consulting with an astrologer. No, I don't think it was, you know what, I don't think it was, uh, I think this came up before that was public knowledge or common knowledge. Okay. But I think, I think it was known that he would talk to Nancy about a lot of things. Yeah. And, and he would make mention of that uh-huh. back then. But I, I, because I was, I thought the same thing when I read this just recently, like, who <laughs> it would have just been too perfect if they would have mentioned that. But I don't think that was common knowledge because I think this came, he was still in office when this came out, I think. Yeah, I know, um, but I'm pretty the sure that the whole astrology stuff. thing came out while he was in office. Oh, really? Okay. I yeah. thought it was after. Okay. Yeah. I no, think it did. Be, 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 be. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, could, you know. I could be wrong. I have been before. As anyone that has listened to episode two knows, I can be wrong often and continuously for over an hour. I think you're being a little hard on yourself. Well, somebody but has okay. to be. Yeah. That or, you know, the other thing I thought, it would have been funny if they would have done like a, a hard-ass version of Reagan where he plays like the dawdling guy, but then like Phil Hartman did him in <laughs> SNL, where as soon as everybody leaves, he turns into like just some micromanaging, you know, terrible person that's that knows everything about everything and is and is just on top of everything as sharp as a tack. But they did, which is fine. This, this, that, you're right. I'd forgotten about that part. That was a, that was a really good part. Yeah, I, I just uh, I just story. enjoyed it. It was something that struck me as amusing. All okay. right. You got anything else about Justice League you want to bring up? Not that I'm not that I'm seeing or thinking of. Okay. Uh, no, I think that was that was about it. Okay. Uh, so thumbs up from you. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I really did. I really enjoyed it. 
I would, I truly did mean to reread it today prior to this because I was willing to. I just ran into some time crunch issues, and I am going to go I, ahead. I no, and no, I am going to go ahead and read more of the international because I want to know about Maxwell Lord. I will continue reading on my own. That and I would from that era for mm -hmm. those. I think it's the same writers. Like I said, I'm I'm ninety something percent positive it was the same writers plotter those miniseries because I think they mm -hmm. also did a Martian Manhunter miniseries too back okay. then in in the late eighties, early nineties, probably late eighties. It was they did one for Doctor Fate, Mister Miracle. Martian Manhunter and um, blanking on one, but somebody else. Those were those were good. Those were uh, those were fun. So you suggested I read Stumptown. Yes, Stumptown. And I think I told you, if, if or maybe I was a little embarrassed. Never heard of it. I, and then when you told me about the series, the TV series that was out with Colby Smothers, is that her last name? I was not aware uh, that was going to be a quiz. from the Avengers. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, there's not going to be any math. Just, just no doubt. Oh, I can handle math um, on the fly. I just oh. pronunciation of people's names on the fly is not my thing. Well, anyways, I had never heard of the series, uh -huh. I, and I'd, I'd, I'd seen something on the TV show because, of course, I recognized her, and, and Jake, jo, Jake Johansson, oh, whatever his name is, from New Girl was on that Johnson. show. Jake I remember Johnson. Seeing, Johnson. You're, you're thinking Jake of Jake Johnson. Johansson, the stand-up comedian from the 90s. That's right. And it's uh, Kobe Smulders, S-M-U-L-D-E-R-S. Kobe Smulders. Okay. Did I say Smothers like the Smothers Brothers? You said Smothers like the Smothers Brothers. That is correct. Okay. Well, actually, it's incorrect, but that's what you said. Right. I gotcha. I tell you what, I, I ripped through this thing. I I sat down thinking, oh, I'll read a couple of issues. And it wasn't, I mean, I think it was all five issues, but yeah, I, it, it just, it, it was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. It was dark. Mm -hmm. It was funny. The, the art in it was fantastic. Uh -huh. Setting the mood. So just off the bat, I'll just tell you, thumbs up. Speaking of going to read more, even though we're going to read other stuff for future podcasts, and, then, and maybe we'll come back to this at some point. I know there's more volumes of this, mm -hmm. just like there's a few more volumes of Black Hammer. I'm going to make the time to to read that you know, at, at some point because it was cool. And I'm sorry, to go back to Justice League real fast, did you like the art in Justice League, Kevin I did. McGuire? I did. The facial, the facial expressions and mm -hmm. all that? Okay. That was another thing for me that would really – Back then, too, I was really into the art, and, and that just helped sell it even more for me. But anyways, the art in some town mm -hmm. is incredible. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it is It is just it, – the everything about the art in some town is just incredible. I – again, this is one of my favorite comics that I just happened to see in the library when I was perusing the, at the time, children's section where they had comic books. They have – I always laughed when I started doing this in particular when I was in, when I moved back to Dallas because I would go to the public library and I would look at some of these comic books and they're right by like kids comics in the graphic novel section of, they call it young adults or teens, teens and young adults. And I'm like, I can't imagine what the more conservative mothers would think if one of their kids came home and she saw what was in some of these comic books. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some town being in the kids section or even teen section of a public uh, library, somebody didn't know that what they were doing. Well, they just don't have it. They didn't have anywhere else to. Then they all of a sudden, I think it was about it, two years ago, I'm thumbing through the graphic novel section. I'm like, what the heck? And then all of a sudden there was a sign up that says, more adult that certain graphic novels have been moved to somewhere and I had to go hunt through the library. They got them back in a different area. And I'm like, okay, that's, it's probably smart. It's amusing because they're on a higher shelf. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must be this tall to read. <laughs> well, and I bet you that happened because somebody's mom or dad or, uh, or, you know, guardian did see what they were reading. Like, wait a second, let me, they looked over their shoulder and saw something and I'm like, uh, give me that. Yeah, yeah. Some twelve-year-old came home with a uh, with a uh, something. Uh, what is the one I've just been rereading? Uh, Powers, um, huh. by uh, Bendis. 
and was like, yeah. the what the hell? No, you cannot read this. Or Lord for uh, God, if they got to hold a preacher or the boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of that, even back in the 80s, I remember knowing, because right when the transition was happening between being able to get comic books at the grocery store or the bookstore, like B. Dalton or Walden Books, mm-hmm. or the grocery store like Albertsons or ATV back in San Antonio, the, the comic book shop started coming up. And my mom and, and father, uh, my mom and father were really cool about taking me every so often. And making a long story long, one of the times I was there, just happenstance, uh, The Killing Joke was just released by uh, Alan Moore. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's a cool looking cover with the Joker with the camera. Uh, and I had my allowance saved up, and I think I spent pretty much my whole allowance on that one comic book. And then I got home and reading it. I remember kind of looking around thinking, I, I don't think I'm supposed to be reading this. But <laughs> this is good, but this this is freaking me out. Because it's pretty dark and heavy for a kiddo, kiddo in middle school? Yeah, I had to have been. I came out of me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think sometimes everybody gets what's going on there in the old comic books that aren't maybe necessarily for the youngins. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so Stumptown, to circle back, is truly detective noir in Oh yeah. It is outstanding. It it literally the first issue opens with her being pulled out of the trunk of a car and then shot on the edge of a river. Right. And then the, and the perfect, and just using kind of a, I don't know if it's a trope. Tell me if I, I'm trying to use fancy words. Just yeah. using the whole detective thing, like, and then 20, 24 hours earlier, yeah. or 20, one yeah. week earlier, or whatever exactly. it was. Exactly, yeah. 20, 20, and, and 27 and hours, 12, earlier, 12 hours earlier, there she is at a yeah. uh, Indian casino. Yeah, gambling and losing her shirt. Uh-huh. So this is about a private detective in Portland, Oregon, which is the nickname for Portland, Oregon, Stumptown, and I just didn't know that? Uh, yes. And you know when when I learned that it was they called it Stumptown, I I learned that when I picked up the graphic novel originally. Okay, and <laughs> so, I and I never. It saw may be it common knowledge, point, but, but it I was not common knowledge that I had. It was not common knowledge that I had either. Uh, I, I've, I've mentioned his name before, Andy Shattuck, one of my college roommates. Uh-huh. Him and his wife and kiddo live in uh, right outside of Portland, Oregon now. Oh. Um, okay. So there there's that. But I yeah. So Stumptown private detective named Dex Dexadrine. Yeah, Dex, Dex Perios. Yes. Dexedrin um, Perios. And uh, she's a private investigator that uh, is not very good at gambling mm-hmm. and gets uh, gets into the casino for over 15 grand. And apparently the person that runs the casino, Sue Lin, mm-hmm. her granddaughter's gone missing and says, hey, guess what? If I'm a granddaughter, I'll forgive you that you're dead to the casino. And boom, we're off and running. And uh, author, Greg Rucka, mm-hmm. artist, Matthew Southworth, maybe? Southworth? Yeah. Yeah, it was just really well-paced and all sorts of cool, fun, different, bad and good characters. Yes. And, and every character was very real. The, yeah. they, there wasn't any of this, oh, well, I'm going to have this one person in here and... It's just going to be two-dimensional. Nope. All of them seem to have a... Just in the limited interaction with every one of them, they had personality. Yeah. And that that's not easy I to agree. do. I mean, no, they've written how many episodes of Batman and Justice League and he still doesn't have a personality? Dang. Low blow. <laughs> just out of left field. Just just throwing, <laughs> throwing haymakers. <laughs> yeah, because this is only... Uh, how many issues was this? Four or five? Yeah, I think the I think six. the first one was like five or six issues. But God, you guys know a lot. She's by the way, something that was that was she's got her her younger brother living with her, uh-huh. uh, Ansel, mm-hmm. who I think from the way he's portrayed and, and the, both visually and the way he's he's he, he he verbalizes as maybe has Down syndrome. Is that what you picked up? Yeah, definitely special. He's special. He has special needs. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I you know I have a a, a, a relative of mine that that. Is special needs, and it was nice to see a kiddo, you know, with special needs like that portrayed and and done, you know, not for any kind of laughs or anything, just mm-hmm. part of her life. Yeah, uh, it was cool. I I felt they um, did a good job of that in the television show as well. 
Oh, really? Okay. I, I was gonna I was gonna ask you some questions about what made it over to the TV show and what didn't. Mm -hmm. Then the, the two bad guys we meet first, I guess, in that first issue are Dill and Whale. Yeah, I think that's Correct? their names, Dill and Whale. And they're just not good people, and they're heavies for we find out the uh, the, the 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 son of the. I guess, or a mobster? Yeah, the son of, of a mobster. Is, yeah, know, it, the uh, head of MS-13. Right. Mar, uh, Marenko. Mr. Marenko is the, the head mobster, and Oscar's his son. That's mm -hmm. Mr. Marenko doesn't want to be involved in the family business, and Oscar's always trying to, to get into the family business, and mm -hmm. his sister Isabel wants in the family business, but she's a, she's a woman, so mm -hmm. she can't be in the family business because of... I think they established they're, they're, they're from... Latin America, or he yeah. was Marenko, and you know she's a she's a woman, so mm -hmm. no, can't do, you can't be a, an organized crime person in that family because you know chauvinism, yes. uh, and sexism. Because, I I truly know. I truly like the homage to old school detective noir that they went through in this with the starting out with the flashback, or I guess the flash, yeah, flash forward. Um, start in the middle kind of thing. Cause that's where they kind of did. They yeah. started in the middle and yeah. then they go back to show where she gets to there. And in that time where she's doing that, she gets the job after she's shot in the river. She then gets called into Mr. Marenko's house where he explains right. to her that he so knows the, she's looking for the girl and she should come to him and that he'll, he'll pay her that much money if he comes to her first. And she does the oh, detective yeah. thing of not committing to it. Just, Oh, okay. I'm going to go. But then everybody else thinks she's working for him now. Right. Well, you showed up there. You work for him. Everybody works for him, especially his daughter. You work for my dad. That's what's going on. You're you're going to bring the girl to my dad. And you start getting the inkling that, oh, wait, what's going on with the two of them? The daughter and the right. missing girl. Yeah. Isabel's the daughter of the crime boss, Marenko, and Charlotte, Sue Lynn, the, the casino owner, runner... A runner of the you know, runs the casino. That's that's the granddaughter that that uh, Dex is looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then the trope. Yeah, you're right about the trope. Sorry, I did read the forward by Matt Faction. Mm -hmm. I think you know because they they talk about Rockford Files in there. Oh yeah, and I love the Rockford Files back when I was a kiddo. I guess mostly in reruns. I don't know if I saw a lot of it when it first came out. Yeah, but you know, good person at heart. Maybe not the best at certain parts of their life and that has a crappy car that's not exactly <laughs> in tip top condition, but still wants it to be nice so much so that when the, the, the bad guys at the beginning are just ripping into her, into her, uh, soft top. Yeah. On her mustache, she's like, Oh, come on. Really? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Not the car. I also did that when he, when he's brought to the Bob boss's house, I thought of the big Lebowski. Oh, when he's looking for the girl. Okay, I did. All right. You know when when he goes to the the the, the house on the beach uh -huh. and the guy drugs him and everything. I, I did I did think of that. And so yeah, Rocker Files I mentioned, uh -huh. but I did think of Big Lebowski too because she's yeah yeah she's a little rough. Yes, uh, around the edges, she, but she, heart of gold kind of. She is a she is a wee bit rough around the edges with a heart of gold. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it was it was a it, it was fun. I, I am interested to know more. They they do put out a lot of stuff. She's got her friend at the precinct that mm -hmm. she can call on, that they talk crap to each other, but they're friends. She's got some history with the captain at the precinct that I, you get a pretty good inkling that they had a thing. Yes, that didn't end well. Yes, and that's that was that seems was, like uh, it started pretty fun. good though. Yeah, except maybe he was married. Well, I I particularly enjoyed the scene and I'm flipping through the pages on my iPad again when she comes out of the water because needless to say she doesn't die when she's shot there, there's a scene in the flashback where she mentions going to get her vest where's my vest right. she asks her brother Ansel uh, clearly a bullet bulletproof vest she comes out of the water to the cops holding her at gunpoint yeah <laughs> and, and they're arresting her she's like what are you doing I just got shot <laughs> Uh, oh, and this just for context, this came out. I, I looked. I did look it up. It came out in in, in, in late two thousand nine, mm -hmm. is when the first series launched. So not 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 terribly old, not not Justice League old, but it's not exactly 
you know, from the last few years, like some things are, but it still holds up. It's still very well done. I can't say. I don't know. And this is me. I guess I don't know enough about Greg Rucka. I'm pretty sure I've read other stuff by him, but nothing's really popped to you, mind. You I have. I didn't do a whole bunch of research on it. You you have read other stuff from him, and we can. I, okay. I we'll, we'll go over it at some point if I'm remembering. Okay. Oh dang it! Now I gotta check. Hold on a second. Before I name drop something, let me pull some stuff up. Oh, yeah, I, I was right. He did The Old Guard. I don't, see? Nope. I don't know from The Old Guard. You what do know it? The Old Guard. It's the Netflix TV, the movie they made. It's from that. You haven't read The Old Guard? You, you should read The Old Guard. I, I okay. only read it because they the movie came out, and I was like, oh, my gosh. So I read it. No, he's just written a lot of comics, and he's really good. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know that I've, Netflix has an Old Guard series. You haven't, you haven't a, seen. There's a show called The Old Guard. You haven't seen. No, there's a there's sure. a movie called The Old Guard. You haven't seen that yet. Nope. Okay. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, it's a it's a movie a... based on a comic book called okay. The Old Guard that I can give you a bit of a synopsis on it right now if you'd like. Please. Immortal warriors. Synopsis over. Okay. Done. Uh, they they find out when they're killed that they come back to life and then they kind of band together and it's in the modern age and they get a new member of their group. Um, and they've lost members okay. because eventually it just kind of gives out. You don't know when your last death is going to come, but it eventually happens. Hey, I'm sorry to go back to Stumptown. And then at the uh-huh. very end of this, the, the, what, what I read on Hoopla, which let me say this, and I have, I don't think that I've done this on, on the podcast that I have. If I, I don't think I have. You were on me forever and ever. Get a public library card. Get it, It's all online. Get a public library. I was like, okay, whatever, yeah. I can get floppies, or I, and then I finally did it. And you're you, Charles. You're you're right. I was that was dumb. You're good looking. I'm not. You're funny. I'm not as funny sometimes. You're absolutely right about the public library card. If if I, I hope every town has. I'm sure every big town does. An, an incredible resource, completely free. So much stuff on there. Of course, I'm using it for comic books right now. They have. They have music. They have, of course, novels. They have nonfiction. Mm-hmm. It's an incredible resource that I'm afraid more, a lot of people like me either don't know about, know about, dismiss, and don't take advantage of. Can't say enough about it. Thank you so much for staying on me about it. You're, you're welcome. You also need to download OverDrive because they also have the digital library from – Hoopla is a little different. Hoopla is like a service, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then they have just the public library has digital comics. The difference between the two is the ones that the da- the Dallas Public Library lends out, they'll have limited copies. So if there's one copy and I have it checked out, you can't check it out. But that's not how Hoopla works. Uh-huh. Hoopla allows, you, if they have Stumptown, Volume 1, anybody that has access to Hoopla can check that out. But they can only check it out, I believe, 12 different things a month. That's fair. Oh, oh I mean, it's absolutely fair. Um, I get my, I listen to books on tape in the car most of the time when I'm driving. So I get my, most of the books on tape I get from Hoopla because I can just find something and download it. I have to, don't have to worry about, oh, well, I got to wait until it's my turn. And then, well, what if I'm in the middle of another 24 hour <laughs> book on tape when it comes in? Right. So, gotcha. So. That that, that um, I'm, I'm glad we're plugging the public library again. I love the public library, and I do too now. And you know what? As a as a as a youngster, mm-hmm. during the summers, you know, you know, whatever, kindergarten through middle school, for sure, even into high school, mm-hmm. you know, that was one of the things during the summer because we'd have summer reading lists, and I was very much there. There were limits as to how this is, of course, back when there wasn't digital. Mm-hmm. There were limits on how many books you could check out. I was always max it out. I was always, always be over ambitious. Mm-hmm. Because I'd always want to have whatever I was into, you know, at the time. And whether, you know, I got into Lion of the Witch and the Wardrobe series or mm-hmm. uh, Wrinkle in Time series, and I'd want to take them all out at the same time, and I'd max out our Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Um, but even back then, it was a great resource, and this, it just still is. And just, I think people forget, especially if you're like me that did love it back then when you were a kid, and, and it was just a great place to go and wander around and find cool stuff, whether, you know, fiction, nonfiction, like I said, it's just great. Well, hey, real fast. Also, I'm sorry to go back to Stumptown. Uh, well, no, I'm not sorry to go back to Stumptown. One thing I didn't mention in, in the in the volume I read, 
that end little short story, Mustang Rank Ranch, about about uh, her car's broken. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and it was just a great little short, uh-huh. you know, thing. It, it really uh, was. Where this guy's this guy's an asshole, and her mechanic. Yeah, I'll be honest. When her mechanic says maybe we can work something out, I got oh god, this is gonna get creepy. Well, no, he's he's got a job for her because he needs yeah. to collect on this guy. Yeah. And she she gets it done because this guy's a, a just a creep. Uh huh. That's a deadbeat dad and owes you know just essentially stole this car from her mechanic, gets it back, and then she gets her fixed car. But it was uh-huh. just a great little end to the whole thing. I I love uh, I love the uh, the bit in that in the movie theater when he's on a date with a woman. And he's yeah, eating so his popcorn, and she saw. sneaks up behind her and and uh, yanks the uh, woman's shirt down, so she thinks the guy with her does it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or when he's on the date and comes up and says the the blood re- the, the blood results are back. Uh-huh. Uh, have you been intimate with him? Well, you're gonna. I'm gonna need all your sexual partners too <laughs> to, to inform them. And then at the very end of that, you have a yellow page ad for Stumptown Investigations. Uh huh. And did you take a look at that at all? I don't remember if I really paid that much attention to it. I, there, I didn't get. There's a bunch of stuff on here, but for example, there's. It's all. It's all. It's a private investigator section for Stumptown or for Portland, I guess. But there's Archie Goodwin Investigations, which Archie Goodwin was a longtime editor and, and writer at Marvel and Epic Comics uh-huh. back in the day, and they just drop. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of it. Oh, the look Rockford at this. Agency yeah. is listed there. Slam Bradley. Um, there's. Slam, I was going to say, Slam Bradley's there. And then over here, you've got V.I. Uh, Warsharsky. Was that the Kathleen Turner vehicle where she played a, a P.I. Yes, back was. in the 80s? Oh, Elvis Cole Detective Agency. What is that? I didn't. I, I, that's, that looked familiar, but I didn't get it. Oh, man. Robert Cray. Is it is Cole? one of my absolute favorite detective series. Elvis Cole is amazing. Really? Um, if they ever do okay. a comic book of him, I, I I'll tell you to read it. Okay. Well, I, I, I know you know, don't I can read, read uh, books prose. too. I, I I can. It's just there's a lot. I of didn't say you read. can't read. I said I, I I know you don't read. <laughs> I don't um, know how to read. Um, the one right under it, Elvis Cole is gently, comma D. Oh, Dirk Gently. Uh huh. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Dirk Gently. What else we we got here? Oh, oh that's outstanding. Got, uh, I'm sorry, that's just brilliant. Remington Steel Investigations, which uh, I used to watch a fair amount of Remington Steel back in the day. All my right. mom liked uh, it too, and my dad. The, the bottom bottom left, mm-hmm. Jay Shaft. Oh, Shaft. Uh-huh. Yeah. Boom. Oh, well, hey, about H. Puro from oh, the Agatha nice. Christie books. The, this is... Yeah, uh, so I, I P. Marlowe. Yeah. Mars Investigations. Oh, this is just brilliant. Okay, I we, we should stop just reading this, I'm sure. I know we're just this is we're, not. We're names, but it, I I'm going to read this later, but <laughs> and I am going to uh, just screenshot it, and I will send this out for any of y'all on our Twitter page I mentioned earlier. Which is what again? J N J A N C Talk Comics. Yes, J and C Talk okay, Comics. And, it, and and is written out. So yes, sir. J A N D C Talk Comics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, man, is, are we about to put a bow on this thing and call it? Well, I guess a, we didn't really. Did we finish talking about Stumptown? We didn't really get to the end of it, but I mean, it it all no, works out, That's and true. it works no, out in. Didn't. No. It, it works no. out in the it, kind of in the ways a lot of these detective stories do at times. It followed along with a hard-boiled detective thing. She brings all the people together eventually, and, and then she. Kind of blackmails the uh, bad guy. Right, but she gives him an out if he would have played fair. Oh, yeah. But then she has a backup plan for when he doesn't, Mm -hmm. when they meet on the beach. No. Because Marenko goes back on his word, Mm -hmm. and she had a contingency for that. And then, you know, ultimately, you're right. She does save Charlotte, the granddaughter of the casino owner. But Oscar, you know, well, Marenko, Mr. Marenko, the, 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 the mob boss is going to let her walk with Charlotte and Oscar. The son wants to try to prove himself to daddy and pulls a gun on her. And it's looking bad for Dex. Of course, you know, this is, they probably didn't want to end the series after one arc. But uh, Marenko, Marenko shoots his son on the yep. beach. Yeah. And I thought killed him. But I, I did too. Later, I, think. I, I think they wanted you to feel that way. And then they come back. On the hey, 
Marinko's son ended up in the hospital the other night with a gunshot wound. Right. So. Exactly. That, that was a, uh, I, I like that. Cause yeah, he didn't, he wasn't going to shoot him to kill him, but that was, it was going to be the only way to stop him from shooting her. Yeah. So. Cause he was, he was, he wanted to, he wanted to, he wanted dad. He, he wants daddy to love him. Yeah. No, you know, I, how do you do that? This really was up my alley when I read it. Cause I mean, it slams up two things I really love, which is comic books and detective books. And I like the whole noir thing. It, it's why some of my favorite comic books go that way. Cause I, I mean, I even mentioned powers, which is, yeah. Bendis is noir, and I'm gonna have you read whatever happened. Uh, oh, the first arc from that eventually. Whatever happened to? The... Oh man, that ticks me off. I'm blanking on the name of it, and yeah. I, it's unimportant for this conversation. But I, I, I love I the way this comic worked. I mean, just with the art and the characters, and the hard-boiled detective, and the fact that the hard-boiled detective is a woman makes it better. Because women can be just as yeah. big a hot mess as men can. Absolutely, and and here's the thing: I'll tell you what. If 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 there are more good crime detective noir comic books like this one, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I'd be in pretty much every time. It's just I know I've read some and I'm like, eh. Or I, you know, I've tried to read like some Sherlock Holmes comic books, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, I'll I, I've read at least a couple times the the complete works. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Of, of the original stuff and you know i like that stuff so the, the comic book sometime adaptations or people trying to do different stuff i'm like yeah it's i all right but i this... think it's much better i have read a, a number of graphic novels comic book ad adaptations of books i've read that i like and i'll still like the comic book adaptation but i much prefer a whole new thing for a comic book instead of rehashing something old just in comic book form so I think that's what's the greatness about this was this is a whole character that was developed that he wrote for a comic book. It wasn't a novel that With he's like, Barry. oh, let's make it a graphic novel as well kind of thing. So it just works well, and, But at the same time, very much tipping the hat in a lot of different ways to a lot of different detective stories, yes. whether they be TV or, or, or novels or what have you, but just done yes. great. Clearly a fan of the detective genre. And just yeah. just a brilliant job. And yeah, and just yeah, exactly. Just done very very well. Hey, real fast, we didn't talk about Gray, the character Gray. I think his name is. Uh huh. Well, and and before we we go, and and we can talk as much as you want about sometime. You you saw the show? I, I haven't seen episode one. Yeah, I saw the all the episodes sometime. of the show. Yeah, we we can we can touch on the show a little bit because I really enjoyed yeah. it. What translated over from the comic book to the show? What didn't is 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 Gray Jake Johnson's character? Or who, who Gray is, is Jake, Jake Johnson Johnson's Gray? character, and it's a it's a little. And I I it's been a while since I've read. I've I'm sitting on the other um, volumes at mm -hmm. my house. I haven't gotten to reading them yet because I g actually got the hardcovers. That's not on Hoopla. I got the hard, the the actual paper copies from the library, and have not cracked them open yet. But okay. He is definitely a more immediately more of a main character in the TV show, and he's a bar owner. I, I never really did quite get what he clearly works with Ansel in this first right. ep. <laughs> <laughs> issue. In the first issue, he clearly works with Ansel. I don't know what he does. He's a bar owner in the in the television show, so I kind of wonder if they didn't smash up the gray character with the bartender that clearly knows her into one. Ah, okay. Um, so he's fleshed more out. The captain of the precinct is a woman. The detective that she gets to know is a man. Okay, so they flip that. So they kind of they, yeah they kind of change some stuff around. Really, really enjoyed the show quite a bit matter of fact i was it's it's kind of on my list to rewatch because i think it's on hulu but i didn't want to do this because i wanted to reread it and talk about it and i didn't want to get in my head all the stuff mixed up you know what i mean yeah so i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna rewatch it it unfortunately i was very excited at the end of the season last year it got renewed and then covid hit and because covid was going on they decided to cancel the renewal and they are not going to do another season yeah and that sucks i, I read that too I, mm -hmm. I did read that that that's got to be just a gut punch for mm -hmm. the, all the people working on that show, which I know those shows employ lots of people besides mm -hmm. obviously the actors that we see. And, and that sucks. And especially because 
you know, I think you gave you, you liked it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the show, the TV I did. show, and, and quite a bit. I, I'm going to check it out now because I because I enjoyed this so much. I'm definitely going to check it out. Does does the first season have any similarities with anything you read, or yes. does it borrow from anything yes. from this arc? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, a matter and... of fact, it borrows directly. Uh, they they lean into this the beginning. It starts with this mystery, basically. Awesome. Okay. Matter of fact, this whole thing with the car and the dill and whale are in it. It's quite entertaining. I was very excited when it came out because I, like I said, I had read the comics just on a whim, and then they, I saw a trailer for that, and I'm like, hold on a minute, is that the same thing? And I, I, I did a quick Google search, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, they, they, this is that, this is Stumptown. That's that same thing. That's going to be awesome. And, and, well, and it was. And in the in the comic book, I I got the I got the distinct impression that Gray has a thing for Dex. Yes. Did you get that? Is that in the show too? Where where maybe it's unrequited a little bit? There there's stuff going I feel on. Like that yeah, was there, there, there's definitely okay. a a a thing between the two of them. Okay. No. Well, cool. Yeah, we're, well, we're I, and I like both those actors. Oh yeah, I like Kobe Smulders and uh -huh. and I like uh, Jake Johnson. Yeah. So everyone in that show it. is outstanding. It it is really legitimately a shame that they canceled the show. Well, for my sake, if nothing oh, else, no. for purely well, selfish hey, reasons, I would have liked to see a season two. It came out in January 2019. I think I had heard of it. I don't know that I knew it was based on a comic book. And not just because it's based on a comic book, that would make me a little bit more interested to check it out. I just, I never even watched an episode while it aired, and now it's canceled before I even really knew it was a thing. So bad on me. Of course, I did the same thing with Firefly. Firefly was canceled before I even knew it existed. Oh, man. Well, so, I, I never watched Firefly that. because they billed it, they were billing it as the guy that did Buffy, and I never watched Buffy, so I was like, oh, that was that girl thing? I don't, nah, I'm not going to watch that. They should have billed it as Star Wars. <laughs> Or yeah. Space Western. And I'd have been all over yeah, that. I was going to say, yeah. No, I know. No, sometimes <laughs> they don't promote stuff very well. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. But hey, good suggestion. Thank you. All right. Excellent. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So next time when we do this, what are we reading? So I have suggested that you read Mutant Massacre. Again, mm -hmm. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get... This is the last time I'm doing 80s uh, for my suggestion, but... Again, right in my 80s, mid, late 80 wheelhouse, uh, Mutant Massacre was a multi-issue crossover with three or four different titles of Marvel involved. You had Uncanny X-Men, New Mutants, Thor, Power Pack, Daredevil, and uh, the, the title of the, the event kind of is uh, self-descriptive. Uh, some mutants get massacred. Yes, yes it is. I tell you what, the other thing I, I found interesting going back and reading about this stuff way after I read it originally and many years ago from now, from the current time, one of the first, if not the first Marvel big crossover event, believe it or not, they had done Secret Wars before that, but that was in its own isolated miniseries. And this was the first time, I, I, my understanding, I believe they did a big story arc, multiple writers, multiple comic books, and guess what? It did well, and now we have one every other month. But, or at least once a year to twice a year in both Marvel and DC. But back then it was new and different, and I remember liking it. And I'm, I'm again curious to see how what it what it's like now. But that's what I suggested to you, and you suggested to me to read Hawkeye. That is correct. From from what, what was it 2012? Recent. What's that? Yeah. I want to say fairly, comparatively fairly recent. Oh yeah, very Publish. very recent. It's definitely in my uh, in when I got back into reading comic books run yeah. of mid two thousands and up. But right. it, it's a it's a fun arc, and I I'm only having you read the first. I think it's the first five comics. I suggest you read more because it gets good, and we can delve into that after that. But I don't want to overdo you. I did read all twenty two episodes of the Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna start keeping account. That's at least three <laughs> Where you said episode is said account, and said you said episode is said of issue, and it's okay because now it's you know what now it's down and now it's downright endearing. <laughs> um, so 
I read all 22 issues of it, and I I enjoyed it as much the second time through as I did the first time. But that is another one that I, I pointed out to you. It's on Hoopla. Yeah. So you can just get volume one of that and, and read it. And it also has a Young Avengers one. Read that, because I went ahead and read that, too. Because it, uh, well, I think it's included in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's included in that. That's what I'm saying. Or no. Well, it's not included. I didn't yeah. read that when I read it. Oh, I may have actually read that when I got it at the, at the library the first time. But on the uh, Marvel Unlimited, I just ran through the first 22 issues of that. But it gets a little bit into Kate Bishop more. Ooh, okay. Or at okay. least lets you learn a little but bit about her. I mean, she's in these comics and it's great because she's awesome she's the real hawkeye Ooh. okay no that's no that's well and you know what i found out and this is probably for us to talk when we're not doing the podcast i i tried to i, I looked and saw that mutant massacre was of course on marvel unlimited mm -hmm. for some reason it was just taking forever to do anything i've got a pretty old ipad but so that probably needs to be updated so that might have something to do with it we'll, we'll talk I about that we'll talk later yeah yeah yeah. Hey, we didn't do. A, I know I played that little thing on the piano when we started, uh -huh. but we didn't do like a. Da, na, 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 yeah, no, but na, I na, I do an opener before. I I do that, record it, and then put it on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I th okay. that's how what I've done on the first two. I just and then I. I thought I, you used something from when we were on. No. Well, no, that's that's not. what okay. I do at the very beginning before I do that. Because okay. I cut something. I cut out something from what we just talked about, and I put that at the front, and then I have an opener where I've been singing your name the last two times. Yeah, you did do that the last two times. Yeah, and I'm okay. going to, well, y'all know by now that I did it again with something different. Because <laughs> I'm trying to come up with okay. something, and yeah, I you you're gonna you're gonna record that little riff of yours, and I'm gonna stick it in here somewhere. Uh, okay, I, I will do that. If you get it to me, I'll put it in. I I kind of think I know where I'm gonna put it. So, and everybody yeah. that's listen to this far will know where it was, provided I do it. And if I don't Good. do it, I'll be cutting this little speech you and I are having out anyway. Cool. Well, man, I uh, I've enjoyed our third podcast yes i have too as well i think it went fairly well and to to all of y'all listening all you know two or three of you thank you i'm yes. hoping it's more thank you very much um uh, we also have a uh, we also have a thing that you can send us electronic mail on it's hav and charles talk comics at gmail.com so if you want to send us email and you don't have our personal email address or our telephone numbers which at this point anyone listening probably does, you can reach us at Hav and Charles Talk Comics at gmail .com. And that's all written out Hav and Charles Talk Comics at gmail dot com. At gmail .com. Yeah, at gmail dot com. And on the Twitter thing, I think we're we we're both we're both individually following the Twitter uh, feed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm Hav Gonzo tweets, I mm -hmm. think. Yes. And uh, you're hearing the real deal? What are you? What's your, what's your Twitter handle? I'm the real deal like with Bill know. McNeil. This cane displeases me. <laughs> um, um, I'm herring red real. Handle? That's right. Thank you. The color red, not red like a red book. Okay. Yes. Oh, man, now I'm going to change it to herring red. Well, don't do that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, that I just really wish I'd have known that. Now that I'm, all right. Well done. Yes. Red the color. Right, R-E-D. All right, guys. Thank well, cool. you very much Again, for listening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Ha. Huh? It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure I'll be talking to you in all of, I don't know, five seconds. Everyone that's listening, yes, have a great day. Bye. Bye.